My name is Lara Partridge. I'm the Global Head of Sustainability and Talent for an incredible company called Santen. Santen uh, specialises in ophthalmology. We only do vision. Um, and we look at solutions and treatment um, in about 60 countries all around the world. Um, we are also a very proud Valuable 500 member um, as a company. So I'm a white Australian woman with sort of just past shoulder length brown hair. I, um, I could not rival Caroline in her multicolour suit, so I chose to just go with a plain <laughs> T-shirt. But I did get my inspiration from Dr. Sylvia yesterday, who was also pretty awesome. So I've got a white T-shirt on that says, because there is no planet B. Nice. Um, very cool. So Caroline. Um, thank you, Laura. Pleasure. Um, oh, hi, yeah. <laughs> I get to talk now, which is great. Um, so, as you know, I'm Caroline Casey, the troublemaker behind the Valuable 500, which you're going to hear about a little bit now, which is my proud baby that was born in one young world and born in the country of Colombia. I know there's some people from Colombia here. Um, so a big shout out to Colombia and to One Young World because this is the birthplace for what is the inclusion revolution, which we are also very, very proud of. So audio description, thank you. For those of you who don't know, I have a rare condition called ocular albinism. Um, I am registered blind. Uh, I have about one foot uh, clear vision now. Um, but how I look today, <clears throat> I'm standing up for anybody who doesn't see so good. Crystal, in case you can't see. Um, I have a pair of white cowboy boots. Everybody who knows me loves that I love the cowboy boots because I rode a horse across Columbia to launch Valuable 500. I'm wearing an electrically blue suit. Uh, a white t-shirt of Frida Kahlo, yes queen, uh, a woman who I deeply admire. Um, I am a white woman uh, from Ireland, uh, very pale white skin, a big pair of black glasses and quite electric blonde hair. That's me. Yes. Oh, I like you. Okay, so there you go, that's me. <laughs> and, and always a big smile, actually. I think I have a big old fat yeah. smile on my face. Oh, Garen, I've spoken to Caroline when she's been jet lagged and, it, <laughs> and she's always smiling. So um, that's a characteristic that I can um, rely on every time. And can I say, just as testament to the fact that you meet incredibly cool people at One Young World, it was actually the 2017 uh, summit in Colombia where we first met. That's right. Um, when Caroline did ride a horse across Colombia and almost into the opening That's ceremony, right. but not quite. Yeah. Um, and it was the birthplace of the Valuable 500, but I'm conscious that there might be some people in the room who don't know the incredible story of the Valuable 500. So to save you all hearing us try and talk about what we thought we might do is just play a really short video, if that's okay, um, and tell you a little bit of the background about the Valuable 500. One in every seven of us live with a disability, making up the world's biggest minority group. Disability impacts everybody. The disability community is one of the only minority group that anybody can join at any point in their life. So why are disabled people twice as likely to be unemployed, unrepresented in media, and still facing widespread discrimination? We need to control how people say, may, or kill and deliver to all of our arms and for us. It's a huge problem, but there is a solution. We are the Valuable 500, and we are driving citizen change through the leaders of the most powerful force on the planet, business. Through our partnership with the Valuable 500, we have an incredible opportunity and responsibility to move the world forward for all. Because CEOs can do the days of governments can only hope to achieve in years. We've built a global collective of 500 CEOs and their companies who are committed to change for people with disabilities. The overall goal is very simply not leaving anybody behind. How are we working explicitly and specifically with disabled people? We represent 22 million employees in 41 countries across 64 industries, including the world's biggest brands. And when the valuable 500 companies work together, the power of change multiplies through their employees, customers, supply chains, and beyond. There is power in collective action. Simple acts done multiple subtimes by hundreds of companies can and will change the way we do business. We are working to ensure disabled people get into work and are supported to rise and lead, have access to products and services, appear in front of and behind the camera, 
hire other disabled people. You and whatever project you are working on will be better for having done so. Kona! <laughs> we will gain direct insight from the disabled community. I do read So good! But when I put all these clothes in the bus. And gather disability data on a global scale. To use that data to spotlight the issue and drive change with our CEOs leading to their personal connections and experience. All of us have a disability of some sort. I think we need to celebrate those differences. Together, we are building a world that includes every body. So no matter who you are, you are part of our story. We are the Valuable 500, and disability is our business. Disability is all of our business. It still gives me goosebumps. <laughs> I haven't seen that. That's new. It's amazing. And speaking of amazing, um, the most important thing that we've come here to talk about today is the latest, and I'm going to call it an innovation because it actually is, yeah. um, from the Valuable 500, Generation Valuable. I wanted to get you, if you don't mind, because I know this is a new thing, but do you mind just telling a little bit to the audience no, about this initiative? I talk for a living. Excellent. Um, but before I do, this is the first One Young World I've come to when we had achieved the 500. Oh. Well, that is a <laughs> My God, it was so hard. Um, by the way, I want all of you in the room to go home and see as your company, if you're here from the corporate world, a valuable 500 company. And if you don't know that, you better go tell them that you are, because Gen V is coming, so they're going to know that. <laughs> Um, they should be, and um, most, of, most of the One Young World companies are Valuable 500. Um, but I also want to acknowledge the power of you in the room. Um, and this is where Generation Valuable is going to come from, and it's, it's another birth, a birthing from One Young World, is the power is in your generation, not as, as you heard Megan say, not for tomorrow, but for now. Um, you're the engine. You're the one, the CEOs. <laughs> Care about right because this is the talent that we want to attract this is the consumers that we want to attract this is the suppliers that we want to engage with you have a voice not because of your ability to see the world differently because you are at a different stage of life to me with menopause or anybody older or the current c-suite of a business but because you're the thing business wants so you are the voice in the work we do anyway that is the tipping point for change. You're the 22 million people that is going to change this. Look, the Valuable 500 was created by getting 500 signatures from 500 CEOs to take personal accountability to make leadership action in their business. You know what? That's great. And by the way, this is the first time it had ever happened. Before the Valuable 500, not one CEO had stood publicly for disability until 2017 in Bogota, right? So just don't underestimate how important that is. But that's just a person. You've got to fill in the gaps. In a way, those 500 CEOs did the outline of a drawing. Now you've got to colour it in, right? So what would it look like if we could get each of our 500 companies with the support of the CEO to nominate a person with disability, with leadership potential, who could potentially sit in the C-suite in the future. What could that be? That could be five hung hungry, passionate agitators with lived experience, reverse mentoring the C-suite, but paving the way not just for themselves, but for everybody else to get a seat in the boardroom or at the executive level. And to tell you why this is so important, I'm going to give you two stats. 7% of our current C-suite have a lived experience of disability, and four out of five of them are not speaking about it. I lived in the disability closet for 20 years, and I know why, but you've got to change this. This is changing. Look what happened yesterday, right? But the second one is the FTSE 100. Tortoise Media did a piece of research for us. In the FTSE 100 companies, we do not have one person who identifies having a disability from senior leadership up. 
How are we going to change this? It's not enough to have just people with disabilities in campaigns. We've got to change the business behind it. We've got to get the intelligence into the business and to normalize it. And Generation V are our revolutionaries. And so what we're asking is we want to get 75 in before the 3rd of December. We're currently at 40. So for any of you who are in a Valuable 500 company, and if you're not in a Valuable 500 company, get into a Valuable 500 company, <laughs> get this on the agenda. Listen, I'm more than happy to break. If we want to get to 100 before it's December, let's do it. But the Generation Valuable program is identifying talented disabled people who will be part of 500 community to accelerate disability leadership to the future, to teach our C-suite and to share, and most importantly, to collectively use your voices. Now, what could we do with 500 of you and 500 of them? Get out of the it's way. So, listen, this is so exciting. And I've seen, I've had the privilege, I've worked in D&I for a really long time. And I've seen an equivalent type leadership development initiative in the LGBTQI plus space. And what that did in terms of bringing people together and forging networks and starting conversations. And so when the Valuable 500 team called us up as a Valuable 500 member and told us this was coming, we got goosebumps because it's such an incredible opportunity. And I would, I would say again, if you're in a Valuable 500 company, go and find the person who's responsible for the relationship. And they will inevitably be your D&I lead or a HR business partner. Stalk them because... Um, <laughs> or your CEO, actually. Well, yeah, well, that's in fact, yeah, quite. Uh, <laughs> always a great reason to build your profile with the CEO right, right? Yeah. and ask them because I think, well, when I was chatting to the Valuable 500 team outside, they said, well, there's about 25 spots left and then Caroline just said 100 and I saw the Valuable 500 team in the front row do this. <laughs> but, but let's say it is 25. There's probably 25 spots left for this incredible initiative. And again, a little bit like I talk with reminiscence about being there when you spoke about the Valuable 500 in 2017. This initiative is the opportunity for these amazing young talent who are in our organisations, who may not be given access to leadership development no. in other contexts, no. to be the, the first group who are part of this. So it's incredibly exciting. Yeah, and I think like Siemens like, just came in the room and PepsiCo, I know that you're in, like, hello, we'd love to invite <laughs> you down. Um, but the other thing is just to, you know, when you create a collective like this, right, it's brilliant. Don't get me wrong, to see that video and still think, we did it. We did it. Um, it's amazing, right? Like, it is incredible. Um, but I just want to say for any of you who are trying to do stuff like this, just for a moment, I just feel I need to give you a health warning. <laughs> this work is hard, okay? This was not an overnight success. I have been a disability activist for 22 years after I came out of the disability closet when I was in Accenture because I was hiding the fact that I was blind. Why would you hide the fact that you're blind? I mean, Having a disability is part of who I am. As Sinead said yeah, you know, yesterday, I'm now really proud of it. I rock my beautiful difference now. But 22 years ago, I was terrified of telling anybody that I couldn't see for what that meant for my life. And what you need to understand in our business is we've got to unlock something super exciting. Do you know that most likely in the 22 million employees to which the Valuable 500 represent, 12 to 15% are hiding a disability, right? Think about that. So when employers turn around and say, no, we can't employ disabled people, what would happen if we were to uncover the truth? Yeah. What would that mean if we were to say, ha-ha, guess what, we're already in there, but why aren't we disclosing? Because we don't feel safe, right? So what does that mean? And Maya Angelou's great, I mean, I love her, one of her great quotes is, there is no greater agony than an untold story inside yourself. Right? Look, every one of us that is here in this room feels that we're worth and something more. Don't you dare tell me that there's not a spark in you that thinks that you could and you have more to give, because you do in whatever you choose to do. And you don't need to be Richard Branson or the CEO of Santen to do that. It's in your place, is to find your way. If you give permission for others, you give permission for yourself. And so what we're doing with this collective is to try to get the revolution to go from 500 CEOs and 500 DNI leads to the full 22 million of you. And then in three years, then what? Then what could we do? 
So I need you to bring your voices, get in touch with the Valuable 500 and say to us what you want this collective to do. At the moment, we're going to be really focusing on self-ID and leadership and storytelling and inclusive reporting and in representation and in culture. But what else do you want us to do? Because you are the CEOs of the future. So please have a conversation with us. If you don't have the words that make you comfortable saying the things about disability, just ask. Please just ask. Because when you don't talk about it, it doesn't get done. Just raise your voice, raise your hearts. We'll forgive you if we get it wrong. I get it wrong all the time, okay? But please don't not talk about this. So go back into your companies, go back and ask with curiosity and just with the passion to learn more. Because inclusion is either all for everyone or not at all. You cannot have a la carte inclusion. You cannot have pick and mix inclusion. You can have an area you're passionate about, but you cannot choose one person over another. It's just wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> so you shouldn't have given me a mic. I've been oh, here for two days. I can't take it off you. It's clipped onto your beautiful jacket. <laughs> um, we've been given the three minute wind up, but Caroline and I had the reverse roles earlier. So she was interviewing me about our incredible late 30 lead 2030 talent, and you asked a question about advice, and I wanted to ask it back to you, because this is a group of the most incredible young change makers, and you've had all this experience with advocacy and change. What, what is the advice that you give others in terms of going back and acting as an ally and being able to overcome some of that discomfort the first time around when people are being like, no, I'm passionate about this too? Okay, I'm a troublemaker, right? So, Angelic, will you forgive me? This is really good for a blind person to do. <laughs> it is not who you are on that stage, in that light, and in that moment. That's not the change. It's in here. When it's dark and when it's scary, when you think nobody believes in you, when you feel like you're going to give up, they're not the moments. So how do you survive in the points where you're on your own, or you're struggling, or somebody says, they look at your badge and go, not you today. No, 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 we don't do disability, or whatever it is. My advice is to you, find your friends. Find the one or two people who are going to believe in you more than anybody else. Find the person that will tell you, no, that's a shit idea, but I believe in you. Find the people who will stand up to you and care enough about you to say, that's not good, but this is. Remember, you're defined by nothing. You're not defined by today for an award you win, for a failure you've done, for a partnership or promotion. You're defined by none of it, okay? If you were to define me by anything that I have done, by my sight or my failures and successes, I wouldn't be here. Being defined by something means you're never going to grow. And the third thing I've got to prompt, please, do your work. Do your work. Why is it that you yearn to do this work? What's missing? Get in and do your work. Because the better you know yourself, the better you accept yourself, the better chance that you will lead. That is the best advice I can give.